is literally here. Is literally among us. And that will kind of frame what we're going to talk about. So before we hop into that, any concerns for our morning prayer that you all would like to put on our morning prayer list? Floors up. Concerns for morning prayer. Thank you. Any others? Helen's got her hand up. I would like to say uh, a word of gratitude about the wonderful installation or celebration of the, the signs for the African American history. Mm. That's marvelous. Mm. Thank you, Helen. Others. Yeah, I'm putting one one celebration. I'm putting it's so good to have it written on the back with us. I've just I've understood where you've been, but <laughs> I have missed your presence among us. And it's absolutely wonderful having you two back in worship today, back in Sunday school. So thank you. So well right back at you. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. Same to you, but more of it. <laughs> Okay, good friends, let's, let's take a moment, go into your prayer closet, that place that Jesus referred to when he was teaching his disciples about prayer, that place where you are by yourself, where you are alone, but it's also still because you've left all the, the solutions outside mm -hmm. so that you can be open to God's presence. So as you go into that prayer closet, take Kathy Nelson and her ongoing struggle to recover. Take the celebration of Brent and Arlene and all those who are now finding time to work their way back into the community. Enjoy and celebration for this community's step in celebrating African American history and honoring that part of our story. Take all that into your quiet space and I'll open this with prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, grant that in our frailty and sinfulness, we may always keep your life and action clearly in our mind's eye. Let us make progress in living like you as far as we can, so that we may grow up into your full humanity and become a holy temple to the Lord. May your grace go before us and follow us and shine in our hearts, be our guide along all our ways. Direct our thoughts and words and actions according to your commandments. That doing your will in all things, we may be preserved both here and in eternity. Amen. Good morning, Brenda. It's good to have you. Good to have you joining us. Good morning. I made it. <laughs> hmm. Did it freeze? It looks. It looks like we yeah, lost him. Happen. I'll I'll text Marin. 
if she's got her phone. Oh, wait. She's on mute too. Wait a minute. All right, let's see. <laughs> We'll wait. I sent her a message. Oh, no. Brenda. <laughs> now we can't see you. Here, if, who, who can, can recapture what Brent said? Here's the question. How are you aware of God's presence in your life, the man presence today, sitting here in this room? Brent's answer was people. People. What did you hear him say about how for him people bring him awareness of God's presence? Well, you're all good listeners. Stacy, what do you hear to your cousin? Just sometimes unexpected or sometimes expected graciousness and presence that comes through people. Perhaps not the expected one. Somebody that just out of nowhere shows up and does something that you see as insightful. Beautiful. The timing is perfect. And Beautiful. You understand Be that. Beautiful. Right. It's exactly what Brent was saying that that's a sign of God's grace. Others, what's your sense of God's presence, cousin? For me, in the evolving sense, it has become the awareness that God doesn't protect me from suffering, but He stands Motion next to me. Motion detected at the back door. And I feel, I feel His presence and His comfort and His grace. It's there for me. It envelops me when I take the time to stop and be aware of it. For him, he's aware of God's presence when he experiences graciousness from other people. Unexpected who they are, but he will experience it. And he feels that's literally God's presence to him at the moment. Stacy says the same thing. And she says it's something she experiences, something that's unique to her that she experiences. She feels that presence, the same thing Ben's talking about. She feels that presence with her. So, the book that we're reviewing today talks about divine presence. Divine presence. How we are aware of what Jesus said and believe it. Trying to believe what what he was saying is believe what Grant said to us. When you experience graciousness from a friend or a stranger, you better experience it. Stacy said for her. Stacy said for her is that experience. It's
grace that she has that lets her know God is in the boat with her name. So this is the book. It's called Soul Force, a story about the rebirthing of divine presence. Just what Brent was saying, the rebirthing of divine presence in a postmodern world. And a postmodern world is the world we all live in. It is the world that all of us now say we see the world not as our parents did, but we see the world from the perspective of the moon. Our perspective is no longer the earth, it's the moon. And we know the earth from standing at the moon, looking back and seeing who we really are in space. With the postmodern, because that changes our perspective, literally changes our perspective. That is happening exponentially right now in the pandemic because the pandemic is changing our perspective on who we are. So the main character is Pilgrim. He has a vague, indistinct idea of God out there somewhere. Hmm. Not Brent sense that God's with him. And not Stacy's sense that God's with him, but kind of a vague, uncertain idea of God. He grew up in the church, went through confirmation classes, believed something about God out there somewhere, but the presence of this indefinite, indistinct God was not experienced in his life as a guide, as a coach, as a friend. As a teacher, as a support. He didn't have that. It's just God's out there somewhere. God's out there somewhere. And he was, he, he, he was and is a restless traveler, perpetually agitated, uneasy, trying to control his own life in order to gratify his needs or to conform to whatever the group expectations were in order to find some meaning in his life. Meaning only existed if he could satisfy himself or meet the group expectation. He was fresh, agitated, but he couldn't put his finger on it. He couldn't put his finger on it. He just felt restless, bouncing from one thing to another. So, I'd like to I'd like to share a little bit of his story with you. The setting for this part of the story is a hospital room following a serious automobile accident. The action that you're going to be stepping into, the action is between Pilgrim, who's a high school athletic director and basketball coach, and Don Knuckles, who's his principal. Listen into this conversation. This patience was present when he put aside his defensiveness to listen compassionately to Don's plan for the new vice principal. Don began with a compelling concern for a community of Iranian immigrants that had settled in an urban housing development two blocks from the high school. The language barrier made engaging these parents and involving their children in school almost impossible. Pilgrim, he said, you have the skills and the additional professional training to navigate these barriers and establish ways to serve this population. Think about Brent. These words breached the padlock Pilgrim had placed on his attention. Don's description of this vulnerable community awakened Pilgrim to their difficulty in acclimating to this new culture. Gradually, their need took on a brightness in the conversation that somehow felt irresistible. The vocal wrestling match then between the principal and the coach continued long past the recommended visiting house. The tussle gradually threw away the dross in the conversation. Finally, almost as a, 
diversion, Pilgrim acknowledged, Pilgrim acknowledged the outstanding job Bo, his assistant, had done while he had been in the hospital. John, in a moment of inspiration, heard it out. What if we promote Bo to associate athletic director and give him more responsibility for the PE programs and free you up to work with the Iranian families while continuing to serve as AD? This inspiration resonated with life giving energy. It came through a quiet inner voice from some mysterious source beyond Don's pushing resistance. It's invisible but clearly present energy resounded from deeper in Pilgrim's heart. Its illumination revealed a soul force emerging in Pilgrim's life. He recorded in his journal. As we haggard over the job description, I experienced another voice. His presence was like this. The change in Bo's job description went beyond the confines of this mundane conversation. Let's go to the records. The soul force. The soul force is more of an activity than an entity. Think of the fan. Tom, turn it up to high. <laughs> Yeah, Think of the fan. Think of the fan and feel the breeze. It's a movement. It's a movement. It's more of an activity than a thing. All of a sudden, you can feel it resonate with you and then it moves on. And then it resonates with you and it moves on. And think about Brent, what Brent said. God is present in other people that pass us by, and all of a sudden, Stacy says something strikes us and it resonates with us. And so, feel the fan and how it moves. Jesus describes the spirit as wind, it comes from or where it goes, but all of a sudden, it touches you and resonates with you. So, Cheryl will feel it, and I won't. And I'll feel it in Shimon. It resonates. The soul force, then, the soul force is more than activity. It's a deed, it's an action, a function, it's a friend who resonates, stirs, produces a positive feeling in me. Think of Stacy. Produces a positive feeling in Stacy. An experience of a loving, caring power reaching out to us. <laughs> you can, Tom. Thank you. Experience is one thing. Experience is one thing, embracing is another. To embrace it. To me, this is the hardest part. I can talk about it. Trusting it is a whole nother goal. To trust that experience of something I can't see, touch, or prove. Oh, me, that's a whole nother ball. Listen to our buddy, you know, This complex answer was not the direction Pilgrim's principal had anticipated traveling. Don Knuckles operated with a one size fits all educational philosophy and was looking for a quicker, simpler answer for this attendance problem. When he heard Pilgrim's assessment, he emphatically stated that. Funding for this outreach program would not be renewed at the end of the school year. 
1942 reductions in Rivash operating budgets that left him no choice. Pilgrim agonized over this obstacle. Initially, he was inclined to give in to Don's decision and abandon the hopes for this immigrant family and its struggling community. He was tempted to stay in the principal's good graces by accepting this ultimatum and acquiescing to Don's decision. The Pilgrim had grown particularly close to Armand's family and had witnessed their growing trust in the school. To the end, the program now would serve those, but would sever those vital family ties that were beginning to form the longtime residents and slow their progress toward full participation in the community. A conspicuous comment from Pastor Anna in her Sunday Reflections encouraged Pilgrim to hold on to this life light despite the obstacles and oppositions. Her text was Matthew 4, 1 through 11. She told the story of Jesus' journey into the desert following his baptism. There he was tempted by security, fame, and control of events and others. He resisted these enticements and entrusted his life to the divine presence of which he was becoming conscious. The timing of this sermon was serendipitous. Pilgrim left the service with a firmer grip on his consciousness of the soul force that had led him to this family. Rather than giving in to his principal's plans, Pilgrim continued looking for a way around this obstacle in his path. Following the soul force, following the soul force is risky. It involves sticking with that inspiration, sticking with that flash of insight, in spite of obstacles and opposition. Lauren was right on when she says, it happens to all of us, suffering and pain. And in those moments, what are we holding on to? What are we holding on to in those times? And is it the soul force? Is it this experience of grace that Brent's talking about? That we're literally holding on to, we're having on to. Or is it something bad, something indifferent? His ally turned out to be Betty Hanna, who had talked with him at junior high when their careers were just starting. They shared a common appreciation for the uniqueness of each child and became close colleagues as they designed special learning projects for students. Betty had advanced to become director of student services for the school system. In this position, she identified and implemented strategies for increasing student use of services and student involvement in available programs. She also oversaw the administration of budget for extracurricular activities, student services, and events. Pilgrim reconnected with her at a reception for a new superintendent, again, a Brent, and Brent's sense of grace. Remember what he said. Pilgrim reconnected with her at a reception for a new assistant superintendent. As they renewed their friendship, Pilgrim brought up his excitement for the outreach program in which he was involved and its uncertain future. Betty was interested in learning more. A meeting with Betty, given her administrative position in the school system's hierarchy, was politically dangerous for Pilgrim. He went to her office at the end of classes the next day, unsure of what the outcome might be. Pilgrim shared his growing attachment to Armand's family and the Iranian community with, to which they had introduced him. He actually added a concern about his principal's intention to eliminate this outreach program at the end of the school year. I don't know where to go, he said. I just know this is not a quick fix, and it does need fixing. Eddie was moved by the 
depth of relationship Pilgrim had established with Amon's family and the impact the relationship had on changing his perception of these individuals who happened to be immigrants. She agreed to take his concern about the endangered program to the superintendent, Dr. Rodriguez Marina. A week later, Pilgrim waited anxiously for a call from his principal about spurning the chain of command. Instead, he was surprised to hear from Betty, who said, I presented your outreach program and its long-term objectives to the superintendent's administrative committee. They were excited by these initial steps toward inclusion, and they wanted to support it as a system-wide project. They reached into the superintendent's special needs allocation to fund this outreach program at all high schools next year. She added in her congratulations that Dr. Barino's experience as a Mexican immigrant himself had been helpful. The words of gratitude filled Pilgrim's journal that evening. A huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. All I can say is thank you for that. I have been given what I needed at the moment. I was relieved. Fortune. Bless. Surely I have been embraced, have been embraced by some divine favor of good will. Was making his way in a new country, a spiritual domain. This awareness of the soul force upholding and empowering him in the concrete circumstances of his life gave him a more authentic sense of self. <clears throat> the entire do-it-yourself universe that Pilgrim had carried in his backpack for so long had shattered and reassembled itself into a wholeness more beautiful than he had thought possible. The soul force, the presence of a divine spirit was in this place. And until now, he had not even known. It was like giving energy, reaching out to him with the warm embrace. Life giving energy was present in every moment. Like a gentle, firm nudge of a shepherd's crook. It gave him what he needed and guided him in the direction he needed to go. His presence connected Pilgrim to a greater story. And even though he could catch only a glimpse of it at any moment, he sensed that this story was unending. He knew this energy was an indwelling spirit, a oneness, a oneness in his life where the soul force was traveling. In this journal, he said, I feel like a new person. My body's a lot better. I'm well on my way <clears throat> to a full recovery. But there's something more, much more. I'm different. I am not alone. I have glimpsed some essential ingredient that is in this book. He knew, he knew for himself the soul force that would never let him go. So the story, my good friends, <laughs> the story is about Pilgrim who recovered a consciousness of the soul force of divine presence in the concrete realities of his own very small life. He reconnected with a higher power. The story was joined to a great story, to 
to an overstory, literally, literally an eternal one. So, so we got a, a we got oh we got plenty of time. This is good. <laughs> we got plenty of time. So now I'd like for you to think about, I'd like for you to think about before we go to questions, your sense of divine presence in your life. And we'll give you a chance to talk to someone about it. Mark's gonna break you all up. You joined us, uh you joined us on the uh Zoom in, in the two 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 uh groups two groups of two as well listen to this reading listen to this reading as jesus speaks with the pharisees and consider me a pharisee i'm well trained in the law well trained in the book well trained in theology so so he's talking to my kind when he when he gets into this so listen to to these words Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed. Paul will just say, look, here it is, or there it is. Or in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. So think about the fan moving as you hear those words, which of those words gets your attention this week? Pay attention. Which word gets your attention? Just like that fan. Think about all the words. Take a minute. What word just catches my attention? Don't worry about why, but just think about the word or the phrase. All right, now that you've got that word or phrase, hold it before you so you see what it means. And listen a second time to this reading. And let the, the word or phrase you have guide you to where the spirit is moving for you in this reading this morning. When Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, The kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed. All of us say, look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. Now, in these few moments of quiet, share with God in that quiet what you heard and how you feel about what you heard. And then rest quietly in God's presence and action deep within. So for two minutes in the quiet, share with God what you heard and how you feel about it. And then just rest, literally rest in God's presence and action deep within you. And if you find yourself pulled out of that rest, just return to it gently.
Oh, man. Okay. Okay. Now I want you to have a chance to share, share with a companion your experience, your experience of the divine presence in that reading. Your experience of the divine presence in that reading. And it doesn't mean you have to have one. It doesn't mean that. But your experience of the divine presence in that reading this morning. So I'm going to give you five minutes with a, with a friend. You all can pair yourselves up. Brent, you and Arlene just need to speak, not be together. And you, and Nick, <laughs> you, and you, and you, you and Nick, Brent, you and Nick change, and that would, that would be done. We'll have to discuss. Y'all can talk later about that. All right. We're going to let everybody go into a breakout room, Martin. If you put them in breakout okay. rooms of two for five minutes. Is it seven? Michael, are you are you and Jackie? Are you guys okay being in a group? Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you in. A, I'm gonna see if I can put you in groups. I'm gonna do. Correct. Correct. Reading as if it was a Three Give me one second, friends. All right, so you should have gotten a very good. Okay. Just to wait, so maybe not. <laughs> oh, oh, they went. Okay.
It was stolen. No, so that 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 museum heist has never been recovered. It's like the great, it's one of the great American mysteries. Yeah. And so someone, Margaret he Heberline said she was there a week before it was stolen. So you're saying a week before it was stolen and saw it in person before it was yeah. <laughs> Okay, one minute, y'all. Okay, one more minute. Yeah, we'll Zoom 
I think that's a good sign. They're still talking. They're still to the bitter end. They're still talking. Yeah. Every last second. There they come. There they come. Yep. Yeah. Good. Good. Welcome back. Welcome back. So, so Jesus is talking about divine presence. Jesus is talking about divine presence. So let's talk for a minute about uh, questions, comments, insights that you got from both the scripture, that reading, and your talk with, with a friend. Floor is open. Divine presence. Questions, thoughts, insights. Floor is open. Anybody? Zoom line, you have to unmute yourselves because I muted all of you. So. Cousin? I'm hoping that Tom will share his insight because it was not the expected one, but I thought it was very, very to the point. Sweet. Tom. Pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess that's sort of a, a negative side to the thing. And I was thinking of things that thought to be and how we could try to make them too big. And what bothers me is the actions of legislatures around the country you know, make it more difficult for minorities to vote. And thinking, what can I do about it? Because if I'm going to take a negative on the thing, I turn it into a positive. Hmm. And what would God want us to do to help other people at least be heard? at the same rate we are and we agreed between us that we don't want false votes we want honest elections we want to know that we're going to believe in them but uh we as we talk together we agreed people should have the opportunity to vote responsibly and that's sort of way out from where you ought to be but Oh, no, 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 it's, it's not way out. It, it's hugely at the heart of what we're talking about. Stan, could you hear Tom's comments? Yes, I can. Uh, barely. The audio is not excellent. Okay, okay, but you could, you could make it out. Affirmative. Okay, good. good, good. So Tom raised a question. Tom raised a question about voting. Basic question about voting. Question I have. But here was his question. Here was his question. What does God want me to do about it? And here's the context. God cares what Tom does. That's the context. That, that's the context of this book. That God cares what Tom does about voting in this country. That it is not some vague something that's out there. It is something that is in the midst of this concrete reality of voting. And where is justice in voting? And what, not only that, what's Tom's responsibility to respond to it? And he's no different than Pilgrim, who says to respond to it is going to be risky. Hmm. It's going to be risky, and do I want to take the risk, or do I just want to go to Sunday school and relax? <laughs> <laughs> but, but his question's right on, and that is the context. That is the sense of God is vitally present and cares what we do today. And how do we know it? That's Lauren's sermon. How do we know? How do we know God's presence? How do we know that presence is with us today? It's a soul force. It's an experience, as Stacy would say, of the divine interacting with us simple folk here in Newburgh today. It was well said. 
and push spirit pushing you just as the spirit should push you to say okay tom is bright and sharp and as influential as you are you need to be doing something amen amen and your struggle is is the same struggle this guy had how am i to do it how am i to do it and the answer is the same one brent gave you pay attention to life life's giving you those answers just like the fan all of a sudden something will strike you and is that the spirit i mean it just occurred to me that having voiced that for tom it's suddenly real i mean it's sitting out there and you can't pull it back bingo mm -hmm. bingo and, and the key word y'all the beauty mm -hmm. of it the key word and, and, and not only is it close it's dead on the key word is it's real you see for me that's the hard thing i was raised like pilgrim with this vague sense of god's out there and well he's out there and okay or she's out there okay or it's out there okay whatever but it's out there Aline says, if you see it, it becomes real. So it's affecting Aline today. And Tom affected Aline, and Tom affected me. And so all of a sudden, there is electricity literally in the room. Electricity. Tom to Aline to me. And you begin to sense that something else is going on. And it's not any of us. It's beyond us. It's literally beyond us. Don't leave Stacy out of bed. She's you're right. You're right. Brent's right. Stacy saw it first. She saw it first. She said, Tom's on to something. And so that's the way we help each other. Hmm. We don't count on Maren to say, this is what it is. Maren says, look here. And Stacy looks and Tom speaks. And Eileen hears. And it's real. It's literally real. It's not vague. It's not indistinct. It becomes something that indeed convicts me how I respond one way or the other, because I'm being called on to respond. I am a sheep, and I am a dumb sheep because I'm only concerned about my food and finding where my water is. And all of a sudden, I feel this shepherd's club pushing and shoving, nudging me. Okay, our time's up. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all uh, staying with me on this. Uh, the book, the book was printed Monday, published Monday. Oof. Well, published hot. Monday. So okay. it, it, oh, it, it is. It, 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 it is available on Amazon, and I have learned. <laughs> <laughs> I, have learned, I have learned that it's important if you do get one from Amazon and if you do like it, write them back and say it's the best book. <laughs> and, and you want to give it 10 stars. <laughs> I, I, I've been taught that's the thing. And even if you don't like it, write in and say it's the best book. <laughs> You don't even have to like it, but just say, give it 10 stars. Yes, just sir. like counting people in Sunday school. Count them, whether they're there or not. You can call on the phone. Count them, so do that. Uh, but but, but more, more important, more, more important, I want to say to all you out there and all you here, uh, thank you for helping me know this. I mean, thank you for helping me know that God is here in First Presbyterian Church. And that what we're about, what we're about is not about just believing something. It's about, as Eileen said, knowing something that's real, literally knowing something that's real. And I've been with you when you face death. I've been with you when you face sickness. And I've been with you when you said to me, I see it. And it is real. I've seen it, and it's true. I've been with you, and you said it is true. I've seen it. I know it's present. And so that that's you've been the gift to me in letting me teaching me that y'all have taught me that. So buy a book or buy one for all your friends. <laughs> also, I mean, I'm not beyond whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. <laughs>
or whatever it takes, buy them, so give them to your friends and, uh, and tell them to just give it four stars with Amazon. That Amazon now is that's the that's the idol that we have to buy. <laughs> so, so I'd like to close with with this uh, commitment that uh, Paul uses in First Corinthians two fourteen through sixteen. So if you will let this be our <clears throat> conclusion, the unspiritual self, just as it is by nature, can't receive the gifts of God's spirit. There's no capacity for them. They seem like so much silliness. Spirit can be known only by spirit. God's spirit in our spirits, in open communion. Spiritually alive, we have access to everything God's spirit is doing. You can't be judged by uncritical spirits. Isaiah's question, is there anyone around who knows God's spirit? Anyone who knows what he's doing has been answered. Christ knows. And we have Christ's spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Yeah. All right. That was good. Yeah. All right. Real quick. Okay, let me do it. Oh, wait. I got, I got to do the teaser. Wait a second. Let me see if I can do it. Well, that's what I can do. Okay. Hey, so really quick. Uh, yeah. People, I got to do really quick. I got to do the, the teaser for next week. Okay. So for next week, it's, it's going to be... Um, Elaine Berberick, and she's not here to give the plug, so I'll give the plug for her. She's doing Learning to Pray by Father James Martin. And if you've encountered James Martin, he is a fantastic yeah, writer. Right. Just and if you haven't, you're in for a treat and you should order all his books. So Amen. we'll 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 see you next week. So right. bye to Zoomland. <clears throat> oh, good.